Hi, everybody, and thank you, Marcus, for introducing me. And today we will be talking about optimizing performance using continuous production profiling. Uh, feel free to drop questions in chat. I'll make sure to leave some time uh, for them at the end. So let's begin. Let's start with a broad question. Why should you optimize? Now, we are going to focus on a few practical aspects. The first is, if we optimize our code to require less CPU for the same work, we can pay less for CPU, that is, compute. Second is, optimized code will run faster and smoother, which improves the user experience, less waiting time and better SLAs. Additionally, while optimizing, we gain better understanding of our app's behavior and we learn how to write better code. And where does profiling join in? Well, if you're optimizing without profiling, you're most likely doing it wrong. You're not taking the right choices, or furthermore, you're taking the wrong choices. Without appropriate metrics, we humans are not very good at knowing which parts of our code are the bottlenecks. We need to profile. So what is profiling? Profiling is the dynamic inspection of running programs. It is commonly used to aid optimization, but not necessarily, for example, I use profiling to aid my debugging. There are many types of profilers. There are CPU profilers that profile the CPU execution time of code. There are memory profilers, which profile the memory usage, allocations, etc. And there are also networking and IO profilers and many more. Now, profiling have existed for a long time, and there are many, many tools widely available. But to our feeling, it's just not used commonly enough yet. Now, if this talk was in person, I would have asked everyone to raise their hands if they did they tried profilers, and we could see how widespread or not widespread it is. But we are virtual, so you just have to trust me that it's not very common. And well, I hope that after this talk, it will help me change that. In this talk, we are going to focus CPU profiling, which means the time CPU spends running code. I put here two Python expressions, for example. Both take about one second if we measure them by the clock but one uses the CPU and one does not. Summing up a, a hundred million numbers, that is, takes about one second on my machine. Sleeping for one second, well, also takes one second, but no CPU time is involved, we just wait. So how this profiling works? We don't really know what the CPU is doing at every point in time. Trying to follow that would induce a heavy tone performance. Instead, the CPU profiling I'm talking about is sampling based we occasionally check or sample what the CPU is doing. Over enough time, those samples will give us an accurate image of our application's behavior. Now, the results of such profile are directly related to the CPU usage of our code. If we cut the CPU usage by half, we will see it in the profile very precisely. This makes the measuring of uh, the, the impact of code changes much, much easier. So how do we read profiling data? One common way is flying graphs. Put simply, flying graphs are a way to visualize stack traces. We have the y-axis, which is the stack traces of called functions. So in this example on my screen, you can see that we have the LWT start function at the bottom of the stack, bottom of the graph. And this calls the THRP setup, which calls the andl one connection, which calls do command, and so on. The x-axis of the graph is the relative samples which include a stack. Now, no, this is not the number of calls to the function. We're sampling, not tracing, so we don't know how many times the function was called. We just know that the relative, relative part of this function of our total execution time is equal to its relative part in the graph. Now, you can read more about flying off in RB Spice page. I put a link here, and there's a very, very detailed page about them in Brent and Greg's website. Is also the creator of flying graphs, so put us to him. Let's look at a simple example with some code. It's a Python script that calls three functions in a loop. Um, one function sums a thousand numbers, one sums ten thousand numbers, and one just sleeps for one second. We can see in the profile above, if you can see my mouse, that the sum thousand takes about tenth of the time of the sum ten thousand, which means that the sum ten thousand takes 10 times more uh, executing on the CPU. We also see that the sleeper function takes no time at all, even though it actually takes longer if we measure it by the clock, because sleeping one second takes about one second, 
and summing a thousand number of stakes a fraction of a second. But we don't see it in the graph because it, it doesn't take any CPU time. So CPU profiling is cool, and I hope that this uh, gave you the taste right now. You can run it locally, but the results will probably be uh, very different from the profile of your application in its production environment. Because the load is different and the data is different. We are not good at predicting production load unless you have a really, really good load test. Using the load test profiling data, data oh, sorry, using the load test profiling data to guide your optimization will optimize for the load test case and not for the production case. It is also important to profile continuously. Code often changes as we deploy new versions of our application, and the behavior of your code can vary over time. Load can be different in the morning than it is at noon or in the evening and such. So let's wrap it up for some practice. We can continuously collect data from multiple machines in a cluster running some application. Then we can view the unified results to understand the big picture of how CPU usage is distributed in our cluster. We can then pinpoint the dominant call stacks and functions and check them out for optimization opportunities. After the next deployment with our fixed code, optimized code, we can check the latest profiling data to ensure that the issue is really, really gone. Now let's see a short demo demonstrating those steps. For this demo, I will use gprofiler, which is our system-wide profiler. It combines multiple sample profilers of different runtimes, such as Python, Java, and Ruby, to produce a unified visualization of what your CPU is spending time on. It is very easy to install and requires absolutely no code or configuration changes in your application. Let's start with a code of a simple application. One second, I'll bring it up. Here you can see it. It's a simple fast application. Uh, it retrieves a random image every time you access it. I'll let you take a look at the code for a short while. See if you can see, see if you can spot anything problematic with it. Just wait uh, 20 more seconds. Okay, let's run it. So I've prepared some server in here and I will run it and start a short load test. So I have, okay, we will run the unoptimized version and we will run the load test. Um, and we can see the Docker stats pane to the right. That's Yep, the, the container takes about 160, 170 uh, CPU percent. Uh, and the application is running. So now let's view the profiling data of it. I have prepared it for it. Let me load it here. Okay. So this is Geoprofiler's uh, UI. I selected the PixUp2, which is the application, and chose uh, to view the, the profiling data from the last seven days. So we have here the profile data. We can zoom into the GUnicorn service and GUnicorn process, which is the process running the application. Um, now we see many, many Python calls in here. For example, a uh, thread worker dot handle and uh, I don't know, random picture. Uh, the dominant stack seems to be download image, where execution split into two stacks. One is URL open. If we take another look at the code to remind you, this is probably this call, this URL open. Second one is this thread function, x509 store load location. Being red means that it's native code, not Python code. We show native code in red. This function is an open SSL function which implements the Python code load verify location we had earlier. It is used to load a set of CA certificates which will be used to verify peer certificates during the SSL handshake. This function can be heavy CPU-wise if there are many certificates to load in the file uh, it's loading. So in this case, it's loading some file uh, spells of spam, which is probably wrong. The thing is, we don't really need to reload the certificate every time, since the list remains constant. So instead, we can reuse the SSL context object. Let's see how it would look. So in the optimized version, I basically took the two lines creating the context object. 
and move them to the global context. So it actually runs once, once the module is loaded. And every time we use this global object here, um, and it doesn't run in every invocation of download image anymore. Now let's try running this fixed version. So I will stop the load test and stop the application and run the optimized version. The optimized one and run the load test again. Okay, so first of all, we can see that now uh, the CPU usage is increased. It's about uh, 90, 80% now. Um, also, the throughput increased, but the stock time is short, so uh, that's out of scope. But believe me, the throughput increased as well. You can see that the lines are faster down there. Um, I've also prepared the profiling data of the fixed one. Uh, for before, I'll select the optimized service and view the last 27 uh, days. Oh. See it? Loading. We can see that. Now the red stack, the X05 load location is completely gone. And the entire code is actually the URL open, which you can search for. And I can now see that it's mostly in paragraph here, it's about 47%. Uh, while earlier, if we check out the earlier example, we can see that it was much, much smaller, which means it took smaller parts relatively, which means we had more CPU time. In the application, here the URL open is URL open is much smaller. See, it's just here. So we have eliminated about two thirds of the graph, uh, which basically means we have eliminated two thirds of CPU time. But since throughput is increased, um, we're doing more work, so we're also taking more CPU time. Well, that's it for the demo. I will get back to the presentation. Okay. Now, we're also using GProfiler on our system. That was a demo, and we're using it on our real system. Uh, I've talked about some examples I can tell you about. Uh, one is a Ruby example. Uh, we are using Fluent D, and uh, we noticed that it was hogging CPU more than we had expected. After inspecting its profiling data, which is Ruby-based, since Fluent D is written in Ruby, this is part of it. Uh, we, could, we quickly found out that the third-party output plugin we were using had accounted for about 70% of the fluent D time. So we rewrote that performance-critical part of the plugin and achieved about two-thirds reduction in CPU usage. Now, I also have one Python example, uh, one Python real example. Uh, this is a flying up from one of our real uh, servers, so everything is censored, <laughs> but the, the one stack that I want to show you. Um, it all started when I saw this function called remove handler ref uh, in our profile data. It is taking only 3%, uh, which may not seem much, but 3% in a core application are actually a lot. And optimizing many small 3% areas will eventually get you great benefits. Um, so what is this function? It's actually a function from Python's standard library uh, from the logging module. I will show you its code right away. Um, it doesn't do much. Um, it acquires some lock, uh, checks if an object exists in a global list called a handler list. And if so, it removes the object. Then releases the lock and then exits. It's actually called as a weak refinalizer of logging handle objects. So each time a handle object is deleted, this function is called. In our case, the handle list was very, very, very long. Uh, now this function makes two lookups in the list. One in this line where it checks if WR exists in handles, and another one when it, when it actually removes the object. Um, now, we don't really need two lookups. We can do it with just one. Uh, so changing the code as displayed now on my screen um, achieves the same purpose. We just try removing and we ignore the value, value error in case the item isn't found. Uh, for our case, this has cut the execution time of this function by half, which is cool. That's one, one and a half percent we've removed from the graph like that, uh, which is great. Uh, now this improvement was obviously verified in the profiling data after we've deployed it. 
Now, eventually, I've also fixed it in C Python's code uh, and sent a pull request, which got accepted into Python 3.10 or 3.11, I don't know, uh, so that others can benefit from it. Now, um, that's it. Um, any questions? I will now look in the chat. I have the chat right here. Any questions? We don't see anything in the chat, I think. Being updated. Mm, I see that nobody could spot <laughs> that issue from earlier. It's indeed not, not very easy to spot. By the way, I didn't mention, um, since I have some time, I will drop a few words about it. Uh, in this example I showed here, uh, it may seem quite obscure, and you may think, what's this code and who's using this? Well, actually, it's quite common, and many common libraries are using uh, using private CA files, uh, CA certificate files. For example, Boto, the Python library for uh, AWS, uh, uses the same concept, and it also ends up calling uh, X509 store load locations. So the same optimization trick I applied here can also be applied on code using uh, Bottle. Um, so it, it, it really happens. From we, I actually thought about this example after seeing Bottle's code. Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, the chat is not loading for me. It's not loading. Okay, so I will conclude. And, uh, say that thank you very much for joining the session. Uh, you're welcome to try profiling. You can visit our website and try profiling locally and then in your staging or production environment. You can also check our demo environment, which lets you uh, work with the graph and data without actually installing anything. So you don't need to run, no need to just go to the demo and uh, try out the graph. Now, if you manage to uh, to improve anything based on data you have collected with, with G Profiler, we will be happy to hear about it. So uh, please tell us your success story. And uh, thank you for joining the session. That's it, guys.